Our next guest has his roots in software engineering. He served as president of the International Game Developers Network and helps recent graduates find jobs in the... What was that noise in the gaming industry? His most recent book, Get in the Game, Careers in the Game Industry, is all about getting your dream job, making video games for a living. Here to tell us more, Mark Mencher. Welcome to the Screensaver. Thanks, man. So you started out You started out as a programmer. Sure did. Started programming about uh, 18 years ago uh -huh. and uh, worked myself up through management, and uh, my companies kept saying, hire people. So that's what I started doing. Really? Yeah. So, so you got a slightly different. Most people who tell us about programming, they're, they're basically they sit in a cube in the dark with a oh, big thing of Dr. Pepper, and they just program all definitely. day. Definitely. I had too much of a personality, I guess. And <laughs> so I started hiring people, and uh, every game company I went to it was like uh, hire 40 hire 100 so that's I just became a recruiter nice so you and you've specialized you hire people to build games for a living that's right is Artists, that why you, programmers you got it is that why you wrote get in the game yeah I got about uh, you know on a monthly basis I must turn hundreds of people away because they come to me with not enough experience you know mm -hmm. to uh, be represented by a recruiter so uh, I was frustrated with that because I got into the business to help people out so uh, the, the, the book was a way to uh, to reach the, that audience of people let them know what they needed to do to get a leg up so they can get into the into the business makes sense what are the biggest mistakes you say you get a lot of resumes that are mess or that they don't have the right experience on there what are the big mistakes biggest mistake is someone will take a common generic resume uh -huh. and blast that generic resume out to 300 game companies. I am looking for an entry level position in the gaming industry that it, will utilize my skills. And you know you got to customize. You know right. you got to figure out who your audience is. You got to mm -hmm. realize that you're you're like uh, like any product being sold. So you got to figure out what are your benefits and what can you sell about yourself. So if you're approaching an action company with children's uh, game images, it's mm -hmm. just not going to hold their attention. So you know so the non customization is what really gets in okay. people's way. So if you have experience, you know, if you've worked in Photoshop designing whatever, games and toys, your characters for seven years, or if you have experience in working on physics and game development at MIT's Media Lab, you put that in instead of saying, I want to be a corporate zombie. Exactly. Got exactly. It. And then, of course, have a demo to show your work. Okay. You know, so uh, it's paramount. You can't get a job these days without showing your work on a demo. Do you send in a, do you want a CD, a floppy, a hard most, drive? Most a... people do it online, uh, mm -hmm. although CD is acceptable, but, you know, you got to put it in, you know, got to you know, launch it. So online website's really the best way to go. Okay. So two generic resume is number one. What's the Number two mistake. Number two mistake is people in their resume will uh, talk about functionality and not talk about their accomplishments. Okay. And again, we all know what a producer does. We all know what an artist do does. So you don't have to restate that. What you really need to do is just tell people what you accomplished when you were a producer or what you accomplished as an artist when you were working for a company because that's what sells you. Okay. So that's kind of it. Now, what about to, should, should you look for a specific job? Should you just fire a resume out to an HR department and let them find the spot where you fit? Well, it sort of depends on your background and what you're inclined to. If you're really good with math, of course, you're going to want to go into programming. If you're great as an artist uh -huh. in the visual mode, you're going to want to look at art. So, uh, you know, I tell people early on, try to focus on what it is you like to do okay. and learn as much software as you can so that your demo can be really robust. That's kind of like two and a half, three, winging it during an interview. That's right. what I've always done. Right. Bad thing. Bad thing. Bad <laughs> thing. Don't want to do that. You really want to practice for an interview. Mm -hmm. It's like a one man or one woman stage performance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're only there for two, three hours, and no one's really going to be able to get to know who you really are in that right. short amount of time. So uh, a lot of people, you know, they get nervous during the interview. There's that blank space, and that they really actually give people excuses not to hire them. So if you just plan out everything you're going to say, what you're going to wear, how you're going to sit. You know, that really, you know, what props you bring with you for the interview, that's what makes a successful interview. Get a really, do, you, do you have like a list of questions people should have their meanest friend to ask them before they go into exactly. the interview? Exactly. I actually role play with people. Really? I tell people to go to somebody and their family, to anybody. Just role play mm -hmm. that interview and make sure you got it down pat, just like a, just like a performance. Okay. So some companies are going to say we want, you know, an undergraduate or a graduate degree. Some people don't care. What's going on? Is it, if you have the skills, do you need a college degree? You know, you don't really need a college degree if you have the skills. A degree is new. There's new programs like Full Sail University is coming out, has a program. Mm -hmm. Game Design, the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale is coming out with Game Design program. We see game programmers popping up all over the place. Uh, and, but our business, our industry is built on creativity. So if you're awesome, you're creative, and you can demonstrate that, it doesn't matter if you've got a degree or not, you're going to be, you're going to be looked at. So if, if you were talking to an 18-year-old, it's their last semester of, of high school, are you going to tell them, you know, unless they're obviously got genius off the scale, are you going to tell them to get a degree or are you going to tell them to just spend their life programming day and night? Nowadays, a degree just really helps out. It gives mm -hmm. you some of the background and the, and the, and the, the building blocks to begin. So mm -hmm. I'm going to tell them to go look at what some of these programs coming out 
and get themselves into it. Okay. And now hiring managers are looking at these degrees and saying, ah, oh, I've got a computer science degree. Let me go, let me go for that. I mean, 20 years ago, if you had a computer science degree, you almost were, you know, didn't get the job because they were afraid the board had, had gotten you and you had no creative thought left. But now, you know, with, with the industry growing, it's millions of dollars to make a game, and the technology is so robust, you know, having a degree really gives you that, that exposure that you need to make a game. Where are the jobs these days? Where are there too many people applying? Where are the, where are the openings? What's saturated? The uh, saturation is in producers and marketing and salespeople. There's just too much of that at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always a need for artists and programmers. That is the, the, the strongest need we have in the industry, okay. and that's the, that's the big bucks. So programming salaries, you know, mom sitting there, you're not going to make any money with video games. What's the real story behind salaries in the video well, games? Well, you're industry? starting out, uh, most start out salaries are around like 60K mark. And really? that's with a bonus program on top of that or royalty stream based on sales of the product. So that's for the artists and the programmers. Yeah. What about yeah. the marketing droids? Marketing, stuff like that. You're going to start a little lower. You're okay. going to be at that 40, 45 range, but still bonus program attached. So the industry pays quite well. I see 75 to 100,000 for mid-level jobs. So how many years? into the industry or where are you at when you're at a mid-level job? When you've got two to three professional games under your belt, mm -hmm. that's when you start to consider to be more kind of a mid-level person and that's when you'll start to see those kind of salaries. Mm -hmm. And the uh, high end, is that five, ten years guru? or? Yeah, high end is like uh, four, five, six games. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got, and then we're starting to see 80, 90, 100K base salaries. And, of course, again, with those bonuses on top, which make it really, really quite attractive and mm -hmm. worth putting in the extra hours. You know that if your game sells, you're going to be getting some bucks. Got it. GameRecruiter.com. Is that your website? GameRecruiter.com. That's the website. Go visit it. What are people going to find there? Uh, they're going to find uh, some industry resources, uh, some you know links, places to go. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to find a little list saying, don't come to me unless you've got at least two professional games under your belt. I'll send you a nice reject letter if you try to do that. Mm -hmm. I really encourage people to do their own job hunting when they're first trying to get in the industry. I know it's scary. I know it's hard to job hunt, but you just got to get out there and do Keep it. Keep hammering it. So Keep well, hammering at it. One last thing. If somebody's sitting at home and they, they, they want to get into gaming, what's the number one thing you tell them to do right now? The number one thing I tell them to do is to start networking. Mm -hmm. That means uh, there's a credit list at the end of every game that you play. Get those names of those people. Contact them. People write articles. Mm -hmm. Contact the people who are writing articles and talk to people who are making games. We all like to help each other. Networking is how you find the unadvertised jobs, or 85% of the jobs are unadvertised. Only 11% ever get advertised really? on the internet. So why go for a job that a thousand people are applying for when you can find the unadvertised job market and you know get access to that? Sounds like good stuff, Mark. Take Thank care. you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark's written some great essentials for you. If you're an aspiring game developer, head on over to thescreensavers.com, read all about it. Salaries, do's and don'ts, links to Mark's book, get in the game, all sorts of good stuff there.